So far we've talked about how you can sort an array when the array consists of instances of a class that doesn't implement iComparable. Let's now look at what happens when you do implement iComparable. And in fact, you probably should in your classes because if your class implements iComparable, then you can sort an array just by calling sort. And that's a very handy capability to have in your classes. The issue is that the basic version of iComparable uses objects. And therefore, you have to convert from objects to the specific instances of your class. You can use the generic version of iComparable to avoid this and ensure type safety. The iComparable method implements a compare to method. Another thing you can do with generics is use constraints. You can use a generic constraint to enforce a rule that parameters passed to a method meet a condition. For example, you could declare that you can only pass to a particular method types that implement iComparable. So let's go see a demo of how you'd use a generic interface and how you'd use generic constraints. We saw in an earlier demo that we could sort an array of instances of a class even if that class doesn't implement iComparable. But it's a good idea to implement iComparable in your classes. Let's see why. Let's run the sort array of customers example. And here I'm going to create three instances of the customer class, one representing Tiny Industries, who has total sales of 500,000, one that represents Big Industries, with sales of 25 million, and one that represents Small Industries, with sales of $3 million. I'll create an array of these, and now I want to sort these. And we saw earlier a number of ways of doing this. We saw creating a class that implemented the iComparer interface, and then specifying in the compare method how comparisons should be done. And we saw using generic comparisons. And those were methods that provided information to the sort class on how to compare. By implementing iComparable, we can define a default sort order, and then we can let users of the class write code that looks like this, array.sort, and then just pass in the array. And we can do that because the customer class implements iComparable. And therefore, the customer class contains a compare to method. This takes an object, which represents a customer, and then the default sort order is now defined to be on total sales. So the total sales of the current customer is compared to the total sales of the customer that's being passed in to do a comparison, and compare to returns negative one if this customer's total sales are less than the customer being compared, zero if they're the same, and positive one if they're higher. And what that gives us the ability to do is sort like this. No relying on classes that have iComparer, no need to rely on a class that has iComparer, no need to use generic comparisons. You, of course, still can, and you probably will if you want to define multiple ways of sorting. But the nice thing about implementing iComparable is you can define a default sort order and rely on that. The downside to using iComparable is that by default, the compareTo method passes an object, which means you then, in your code, have to cast from that object to an instance of the customer class. Maybe a better idea is to use the generic version of iComparable. So the customer class also implements iComparable of customer. And therefore, it has a compareTo method that is generic. And in this case, compare to receives an instance of the customer class, and there's no need to convert the object to customer. Now let's set a breakpoint here and do the sort. So now, other customer is an instance of the class, has total sales of 25 million. We're going to compare that to this current instance of the class. Let's go into the immediate window and see who this customer is. We're currently comparing 
Tiny Industries has total sales of 500,000. So this will return a positive number, indicating that Big Industries comes after Tiny Industries in the sort order. Let's remove the breakpoint, step out of this, complete the sort, and now let's display the customers sorted by sales. Tiny, small, then big. So by implementing iComparable, we can define a default sort order, and by using the generic version of the iComparable interface, we can avoid casting from objects to the specific customer data type. But in all likelihood, you want to combine both implementing iComparable and then using iComparer. You'll want to define a default sort order for customers, but you'll also want the ability to specify additional ways of sorting. So let's go back and take another look at iComparer. I'll run the sort with generic iComparer example. And here, we're going to return to one of our previous examples, which was sorting files. So we'll create a new instance of the directory info class in the system.io namespace that points to the root directory. Then we'll call the getFiles method to return an array of files. So this array has an instance of the file info class for each file in the root directory. And now we want to sort this based on file names. What we saw earlier in the sort with iComparer example, we saw earlier that we could pass an instance of a class that implemented iComparer. And let's look at what we used before, we passed an instance of a class called CompareFileNames that implemented iComparer and took as parameters two objects. These objects then had to be cast to instances of the file info class. But again, we're using objects. We know we're working with files. We don't want to have to pass those as objects just to cast them back. So what we really want is a generic version of the iComparer interface. So here we're creating a class called generic compare file names that implements iComparer of file info. Now we're specifying that when we use this class to sort, we're using a generic version of iComparer. And we're specifying that that takes instances of the file info class. So let's go back to where we were in the code. Call the sort, which was here. We're on this line of code. We're sorting this array of files using the generic compare file names class. And two parameters get passed file one, which is an instance of file info, and file two, which is an instance of file info. And these come in not as objects, but specifically as instances of file info, so there's no need to cast them to do the comparison based on the name. And so now, we get the same results that we saw earlier, which are these files sorted by name, but in a much more efficient manner. And we can do the same thing with file lengths. Let's go to the definition of generic compare file lengths. This also implements the generic version of iComparer, and there's no receiving as objects and then casting back to file info. So to the user, this code does the exact same thing, but we're happy because it's much more efficient. So both the iComparable and the iComparer interfaces have generic versions. Let's take one more pass at comparing. I'm going to run the CompareCustomers method. And what I want to be able to do now 
is defined more of a generic way of comparing. So let's create a customer called Big Industries, and Big Industries places three orders, and so they have a total sales of 265,000, which is the sum of those three orders. Now let's create another instance of a customer, Small Industries. They place three orders, and now they have total sales of 245,000. I want to know which of these customers is bigger. So I want to be able to write code that says customer 1 compare to customer 2. I want to be able to take advantage of the compare to method and just compare customers directly and have the compare to method be smart enough to know by default what are we basing the comparison on. And as we saw earlier, we're basing the comparison on total sales. So let's do the comparison. And the result comes back positive. Big industries is bigger than small industries. And we'll then display that on the screen. So big industries with sales of 265,000 is bigger than small industries. Okay, so far so good. Now, let's do other comparisons. So I'll run the generic compare method example. And here, once again, we'll create the same two customers. But now, I'm thinking, well, sometimes I want to compare customers. Sometimes I want to compare orders. Sometimes I might want to compare other things. So I could, in each of my classes, implement iComparable and have a compare to method and define the default sort order, and I'll probably do that. What I want is a generic compare method that I can pass any two classes to, and I want the compare method to be smart enough to compare the two classes and return the result. So I want to be able to write code like this comparers.compare, and then I pass the first instance of customer and the second instance of customer. Because later on, I'm going to do the same thing with orders. So let's look at this compare class. It's in the comparers. I've defined this compare method to be generic, so I'm using of item type. And that specifies that to use the compare method, we're going to be passing two classes of that same item type. Then we're going to rely on the fact that each of the classes implements iComparable and therefore has a compare to method that can compare the two classes. So let's see how this works. We're going to step into this, and the first item type we're passing is an instance of the customer class, that's customer1, big industries. And the second parameter we're passing is another instance of the customer class, that's small industries. And we can therefore implement the compare to method because these classes implement iComparable. Let's step into that, and we go into the customer class, and we run this generic version of the compare to method and return that one of these is bigger than the other, and let's display that. Big industries, bigger than small industries. Okay, now let's do the same thing with orders. Let's create an instance of the order class, set the order ID, the units, the unit cost, the total cost is units times total cost, and so for this first order, that's $100,000. We'll create a second order that's smaller, and the total cost there is $4,000. Actually, the total cost is $200,000. Now, we're going to compare these two orders. So let's step into the same compare method we just saw, and this time, we're passing instances of the order class with order 1 at $100,000, and the second order 
total cost of $200,000. And we'll return which one is bigger. And we'll display that. And we see that order one is smaller than order two. So what we've done in this compare method is we've made it generic by using the of item type, but we've also used a constraint. We've said that the only things you can pass to this compare method are types that implement iComparable. So we're making sure at runtime that this line of code here, class one dot compare to class two, actually works. Because if we passed in classes that didn't implement iComparable, then calling compare to would fail. So the benefit of being able to use the generic constraint here is that we can constrain the types that are passed into the compare method. So what you've seen in this demo is using generic versions of the iComparable and iCompare interfaces to eliminate the casting back and forth between objects and ensuring type safety and better performance, and also the ability to use a generic constraint to specify conditions that must be met on parameters that are passed in. And in this example here, we specified that anything passed into this compare method has to implement iComparable so that we can call the compareTo method.